Welcome back to the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel. Today, we'll be answering the question, how can you prevent shingles? Shingles, also known as herpes zoster, is a viral infection that results from a reactivation of the varicella zoster virus, which is the same virus that causes chickenpox. When you're infected with chickenpox, the virus that caused this infection stays in your body even after the infection goes away. The virus stays dormant in your body for many years. Picture the virus in your body, but instead of being active and making you sick, it is sleeping so that you don't even notice it's there. However, as we age and our immune system weakens, there's a higher chance of the varicella zoster virus becoming activated, leading to the shingles infection. Because of this, you can only become infected with shingles if you have already had chickenpox in the past. The symptoms of shingles include a painful, blistering skin rash. Eventually, these blisters erupt and scab over. For some individuals, the pain can last for a long period of time, even after the skin rash has disappeared. In order to prevent shingles, adults aged 55 years and older are viable to receive a vaccine. There are two available shingles vaccines called Shingrix and Zostavax. While both vaccines are suitable for preventing shingles, Shingrix is a newer and recommended vaccine. When a virus enters your body, it begins to reproduce. Your immune system will recognize the virus as a foreign invader and respond to the threat by making antibodies, which will work to destroy them. Their second job is to protect you from future infections. They hide away in your bloodstream. If the same virus tries to infect you again, they come to your defense. Vaccines work in a similar fashion. They help you develop immunity before you get sick. Vaccines are made from the same agents that cause a specific disease, in our case, varicella zoster. They're introduced into your body, usually by injection. Your immune system will react to the vaccine by making antibodies. The antibodies destroy the vaccine's weakened virus, like a training exercise. If you're ever exposed to the real disease, these antibodies are in place to protect you. Shingrix is an FDA-approved vaccine for the prevention of shingles in adults 50 years of age and older. Unlike Zostavax, Shingrix is an adjuvant recombinant subunit vaccine. This means that the vaccine contains specific components of the virus, known as antigens. It also contains a substance called an adjuvant, which enhances the body's immune response. Shingrix only contains part of the varicella zoster virus, which means that unlike the previous vaccine, it can be used in people with a compromised immune system. Shingrix should be injected intramuscularly in the deltoid region of the upper arm. This enhances the immunogenicity of the vaccine and minimizes adverse reactions at the injection site. Subcutaneous injection is a vaccine administration error and should be avoided. This is because there is poor vascularity in these regions, which may cause vaccine failure. Shingrix is given as a two-dose series, with the second dose administered two to six months after the first dose. We often hear that once we receive a vaccine, we are now immune to that specific disease. But what does this really mean? We'll now explore what happens in the body once the shingles vaccine is administered. Once the inactive virus reaches the bloodstream, there are two responses that occur, the innate response and the adaptive response. The innate immune system acts as the first line of defense against the varicella zoster virus. After vac vaccination, as the virus enters the bloodstream, the body recognizes it as being foreign and elicits an inflammatory response. This response may cause redness, swelling, or pain in the area where the vaccine was administered. This is why you feel sore after re receiving a vaccine. Once this response has occurred, this allows for other specialized cells of the immune system to travel to the area, called neutrophils, macrophages, and dendritic cells. These cells are not specific to a certain pathogen and is more of a general way for the body to protect itself. They are involved in initiating phagocytosis. This means that these cells will alert the body that a foreign object is present and will work to phagocytose or digest them. After this has taken place, the adaptive immune system comes into play. 
This response is much slower, since the adaptive immune system has to identify the varicella zoster virus first. But how does it identify the virus? After the innate immune system has done its job and digested or phagocytosed the virus, the innate immune cells, known as antigen-presenting cells, or APCs, will present chopped up or fragmented pieces of the virus called antigens. These antigens are presented on the surface of cells through the use of MHC molecules. This is like a flag that tells the other cells of the adaptive immune system that there's something foreign in the body that needs to be destroyed. These other adaptive immune cells that recognize MHC molecules are known as T cells and B cells, and they work to destroy the virus. The T cells will recognize the antigen on the surface of the antigen presenting cells. In other words, the adaptive immune system will see the flags that are pre present on these cells and will either express CD4 helper T cells or CD8 cytotoxic T cells to carry out the immune response. The CD4 helper cells are used to produce cytokines, which are a type of signaling molecule that will recruit B cells to help destroy the antigen. On the other hand, the CD8 cytotoxic cells will detect the virus and kill the antigen presenting cell all on its own. Besides this, the adaptive immune system has a special feature which makes it more specific. It is able to remember the virus and other pathogens that it has encountered before and therefore knows how to target it. When it first comes into contact with the virus, it may take time for it to respond, but eventually it will be prepared to target it if it ever comes into contact with it again. Once it has eradicated the virus, it will create antibodies against it. These antibodies will then target the antigen, which are the fragmented pieces of the varicella zoster virus that are produced by your body, and it will be prepared to fight it if it ever comes into contact with it again. Antigens and antibodies can be visualized as a lock and key mechanism. The antibodies are the lock and the antigen is the key. When the actual varicella zoster virus is reactivated in the body and tries to cause a shingles infection, it will be recognized by your immune cells which will create fragmented pieces of the virus. These pieces will fit inside specific locks, which are antibodies, to be destroyed. There are so many misconceptions surrounding the topic of shingles and the shingles vaccine. It is a common myth that getting chickenpox when you're young will prevent you from getting shingles in the future. However, the opposite is true, as you can only become infected with shingles if you've already had chickenpox. Shingles is a lot more prevalent than we think, it is estimated that about 1 in 3 people will develop this viral infection during their lifetime. However, infection is easily prevented and data has shown that the Shingrix vaccine has reduced the number of cases of shingles by 85%. To learn more about shingles, click on the links in the video description below. Thanks for watching! Also, remember to subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine channel by clicking below to learn more.